shirt on and red pants shorts and this car is black with the red leather um, I didn't plan that at all so this car is all new for 2019 this is the fourth generation BMW Z4 so let's take a look <laughs> day today here in central Pennsylvania but it's super windy so I hope you can hear me um, now we're gonna take a look at this car we're gonna talk about the new design cues that BMW is doing with these cars uh, see what direction they're heading then we're gonna take this thing out on the road and drop the top like it is already and take it out for a ride I haven't driven a Roadster in a long time so let's talk about the styling of this car okay now we're gonna talk about the styling of this car but just to get a little uh, existential and some background the market for this car is sort of slowly dying you know everybody wants to drive SUVs and the sort of two-seat Roadster uh, segment of cars is sort of like getting smaller and smaller Mercedes which is over there does not make the SLK anymore so really if you're in the market for this car your options are this you could buy an Audi TT which is right over there you could buy a Porsche Boxster um, they also have four cylinder engines but this this segment is slowly slowly dying which is kind of a shame because this is the fourth generation of this car and the first one is all the way from back in the 90s um, but I really like the design and the way that they're going for this car it's it's simple and not too busy and I just like it now this car is powered by a 2 liter turbo 4 cylinder engine with 255 horsepower 260 foot pounds of torque and this car will still go 0 to 60 in something around 5.2 seconds you know a small car like this you know same engine as all the other BMWs but way lighter I'm sure this thing will actually fly so we're going to take it out on the road and test that out but first uh, I want to talk about the styling of this car this car is brand new for 2019 and just look how big and wide these kidney grills are that is you know a design that BMWs are going through uh, anymore and I think it looks pretty good I love how it's like blacked out now one thing that I'm still not sure I'm crazy about but it actually looks pretty good in person is the design of the kidney grills you know forever and ever we had these vertical slats uh, and the kidneys were a lot smaller but it, it doesn't look bad in person I it, you know when you see pictures of something online you know you make your first snap judgment but I think this looks pretty good in person especially in this blacked out trim now if it was chrome or silver I think it wouldn't look as good as this but just look at the aggression of this front bumper now the other thing that is sort of interesting of the design is this new design of the headlights which is just it's just different from BMW's of before you know forever and ever 90% of BMWs on this lot have had two round headlights forever and ever. Now these are sort of stacked on top of each other. Um, and the LEDs, as you see right there, looks pretty good. It's just they, they have more of a rounded look and stacked on top of each other. But overall, I think it looks really good. This car looks absolutely gorgeous in the black with the red leather and the black wheels. These are good looking wheels. I've always loved five spoke. Uh, double five spoke uh, wheels. These are Michelin Pilot Sports, the best tires on the market. Uh, if you're looking for tires, get Michelin. I have some on my Mazda and I absolutely love it. Now, moving around to the back, you sort of have got the, I guess I call them like hockey puck uh, taillights, but it's a nice, simple, clean design. One thing that when the turn signals are on, all this is illuminated. It's like two dashes going this way, which is interesting. I, I feel like the government still lets people do that and don't have a separate uh, turn signal. You've got a nice subtle little 
lip spoiler here and you can see like the depth of the taillights they really go far back I mean this is this is damn near a foot away from the gas cap the gas door right there so you've got uh, two exhaust pipes now now this is the s drive 30i which means it's rear wheel drive uh, 30i is the bottom trim this is the four cylinder version but they are going to have an m40 version which is the 380 horsepower turbo six cylinder i can't imagine an engine that big in a car as small like this um, that thing's got to be uh, an absolute blast to drive maybe someday we'll come back and take a look at this but you've got this is obviously a roadster you've got the z4 print right here on both sides there this leather is gorgeous We're, we'll go in there and take a look in a second but the proportions look right i think this the third generation z4 was good looking too but it was a little more understated uh you know the z3s that came before it were also so much smaller i mean this this front section from the windshield forward is is pretty big you know for a small car like this obviously you've got uh small overhangs in the rear but as far as the design goes i really i really like it i, I don't think it's too flashy they've gone a little bit different route with the headlights and the kidneys but in this blacked out trim i think it looks great all right so let's take a look uh under the hood now this is the two liter twin power turbo. That name is a little bit deceiving because it's only a single turbo, but look at all this room you've got in front of this four cylinder. I'm sure that is so you can fit the inline six cylinder of the M3 or the M40 engine here. But I wonder, I wonder if they could fit a V8 in here. Can you imagine this car with uh, BMW's V8 in there? That would be awesome. But yeah, very clean, nice and simple. Not much to see in these engines. I just always like to look at the trim you know this this part of the engine has been here since the 70s the the single lines in the bmw it looks really good so yeah that is the engine i'd also like to mention when when you open the hood on bmws you do it twice and then you don't have to find any latch or anything underneath. you just pull under and you pull it up it's kind of nice that you don't have to go searching for a latch or you know it's a new car you don't know where it is so kudos to bmw for that that is a nice feature all right now let's take a look at the interior design because it is just as nice as the outside all right going on the inside of the z4 now this i don't know what you call this leather it's sort of uh almost like a poppy seed orange it, it actually sort of clashes with my shorts but uh, i love how it looks nice on the doors and the seats as well it's just sort of so in this car it kind of breaks up the black of the outside man you really sit down low in this car which is nice now this is this is actually the first roadster i've been in a while i'm not used to having you know nothing over my head so this is what bmws look like on the inside now they have this similar steering wheel you've got the zf eight speed automatic you've got the big screen up here um, you've got all your central command down here for your iDrive and your sport settings. You know, you lift the roof up right here, parking brake, all your camera stuff. So BMW also has the tachometers that go the other way now and the speedometer that goes uh, like a conventional. Now, this screen, you know, as the technology progresses, people are always coming up with digital screens to put in here. And from what I've experienced, this system is very nice. Um, I think Audi and Mercedes is a little bit more customizable. Um, my wife's car has the virtual cockpit, which is Audi's system, and Mercedes has the MBUX, which I tested out in the A class, and it was <clears throat> amazing. I mean, unbelievably customizable, but this is still a solid uh, infotainment system in the Z4. Now, this being a two seat roadster, obviously, you have not much back here. There is a little bit of room behind the seats for storage. Um, there's actually a pass through right here that you could put something through from the trunk and we're gonna go look at the trunk in a little bit but overall I like the screens and I like the design of everything in here everything sort of has a nice touch this piano black will get fingerprints all over it which is fine and they have a nice silver trim that they use but this this piano black is nice but it will get fingerprints all over it um, the silver trim they offer is very nice too they also have the crystal shifters but not in this car now just to talk about the infotainment screen a little bit now i have the car in reverse or i had it in park if you go into reverse it's got a nice looking camera um you can go uh do a couple things to see uh what is behind you and all this different stuff the camera snaps nice you got the nice little grids of where you're gonna go 
um, you've got a couple different things you can do automatic parking where the car if you are parked somewhere it will know where you were and get you out of that uh, parking spot as well that is the backup assistant I think it was but it'll tell you how far you're going and where you have gone to get you out of a tight spot now if, as I get closer to these cars behind me it will beep and turn yellow and red which we are not going to hit those cars because that would I'd be in big trouble but yeah this uh, camera system is very nice and one of the best in the business I think now the screen here obviously you operate everything right here but you can still use your fingers as a touch screen you know sport displays would we'll definitely keep that up um, but there's navigation computer media um, the screen looks very nice, very responsive, feels like a you know smartphone. Um, map, it's huge. This is like a 10 inch screen, looks very nice. Pixels look very nice to go along with this screen too. Everything is, we're getting closer to everything being a digital screen, which I'm completely fine with. Um, you know, no more analog dials, you know, they're, they're sort of going by the wayside. Some cars still have them and there's, there's still a place for them, but in these sort of high tech cars, um, it's getting more and more outdated. Everything feels very nice in here. The materials feel nice. The steering wheel has a nice thick feel to it. Uh, it does not feel cheap. And this car for $50,000 should not feel cheap and it definitely doesn't. All right, so that is it for the interior. It's very nice. The materials feel nice. Everything you touch and put your elbow on feels nice. Uh, the center console is nice too. Now, the reason that this center console is not, you know, symmetrical is because this is where the cup holders are. So if you have your coffee or something in here, you can open this side up and close this side, you know, put your arm on when you're driving in the car. So that's that's something nice. There's, there's not much room up here for cup holders, so they stow it in the center armrest here. It looks a little funky when it's closed because it's not exactly symmetrical, but that is where you put your uh, Mountain Dews. Now this is a Roadster, so we gotta put the top up just to see how that operates. I'm pretty sure you can operate the top and open and close in about 10 or 11 seconds, so let's try that out. Okay, now this is what the top looks like with the top up. Obviously, it is a black cloth. Uh, you still have a glass rear window. Um, it looks nice with the you know shape of the car. Hard tops always make the aesthetics of the car look better just because they let the body lines feel a little better, but this still looks good. This car is completely blacked out. It looks great. I mean, I love the black wheels and the black to go with the red leather. So let's check out the trunk. Now, to open the trunk, you take the key fob, obviously you press the button, and my st uh, license plate fell off. Now, if you're buying this car, this could be enough space to, you know, to take this car to the grocery store and get stuff. It's not, not terribly small. I mean, I've seen smaller, so this is what you're gonna get with this size car. But there's the pass-through that you can open up and put things through there. Let's say you're buying a lamp or something. But yeah, this is uh, not a tiny, tiny amount of space. But yeah, you got your last there in case somebody gets trapped in here. But overall, not bad. All right, so we're going to wrap up this video and then we're going to take this thing out on the road. So the 2019 BMW Z4, I think, would be a solid choice for a luxury uh, top-down Roadster uh, in a segment that is getting smaller and smaller. You know, everybody wants SUVs and, you know, performance sedans. But I think there still could be a place for this car. Um, maybe on the second-hand market, this car a year old at 40-something thousand. Uh, it's not the cheapest car. Um, but I think this could be a solid fun little roadster and I'm gonna find out how fun it is to drive in a second So I'm gonna stop this video and then I'm gonna take this thing out on the road and give it a gam score So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya